Hey, John here from John's Do It Yourself. After I made the Firebolt, I asked my viewers what they wanted me to make next. The majority of you said the Nimbus 2001. I took a look at this room and basically thought I bit off more than I could chew. Also, if you're here because you are looking to win this broom, you need to pay attention to this video because somewhere in this video, I will give clues for the time and the day I will post questions for the contest. On that day, I will simply post a video with me asking three simple questions. Real fans of Harry Potter and John's Do It Yourself will have no trouble answering them. The first person to post the correct answers, I will pin their name to the top for all to see. You need all three to be correct, so don't post early and help anyone else out. So, by request, here it is, the making of the Nimbus 2000. Notice I'm not calling this a do-it-yourself because this one kicked my ass. So based on viewer feedback, I knew I would be making the Nimbus 2001 next. So during my daily routine, I always keep an eye out for common things that would assist me in making the broom. Here you can see I passed both a broken down desk and a couch cushion on the side of the road. I'm not going to bore you by making you watch me do yard work again, and you have seen this process already with both the Nimbus 2000 and the Firebolt. Unlike the other brooms, I jumped right into making the handle because they were made of wood, and wood is easy to me. But looking at this broom, I knew the hardest part would be the footrest, so I decided to start there. Using a picture from the internet, I sketched out what I thought the footrest would actually look like, and this is where it all started. I purchased one hollow aluminum rod, two solid aluminum rods, and one thinner steel rod from Home Depot. Notice my cost tracker just went up. I cut each rod in half, and this would give me all that I would need to complete the footrests. Now this next step can be done using a vise or other means, as long as you bend both legs at the same time so they are identical. I have a rod bending tool, so I'm going to use it. Now that your outer legs are bent, take your hollow aluminum rod and cut it at about 5 inches. Find a metal drill bit that is the same circumference as the solid aluminum rods. We are now going to drill holes in the footrest crossbar. Okay, first mistake. Do not drill all the way through the crossbar. So I real quick re-drill my holes and this time only through one side of the tube. Take your legs and place a hole on the top of each one the diameter of your steel rod. Ensure your hole is in the same direction as your outer bends. Align your legs to the holes you just drilled to see the exact distance for your upper curved part. Once you know the distance, find a round object that will help you make an even bend. It actually took me five tries to find the exact item that would work. For the lower arc, I used a large paint cam to keep the bend even. I stuck my upper arc in a vise and just pulled back on it, giving it a bend that was approximately about 45 degrees. Place your lower arc on the legs and then estimate the upper arc's position so you can mark it and cut off the extra portion of the arc. Take each end of the arc and shave it down until it is flat. Here I use a bench grinder, but if you have a bench sander, I found that this works like a thousand times better with aluminum. So with either a sander or a grinder, round out the upper portion of the leg so that they will push all the way up into the crossbar holes. Once they are both rounded, push them into the crossbar holes and send the steel rod through them to hold them in place. Here I am just eyeballing it to see what looks good, but once you decide, use a measuring tape and mark both sides so that they both are evenly distanced from the crossbar. Take your arc ends and drill a small pilot hole. Ensure it is smaller than the screws you intend to use. This will allow the screws to dig into the aluminum for an incredibly tight grip. Here I use a mechanical pencil so I can extend the lead out and pass it through the holes that I just drilled and mark the lower legs. Then I simply drill the pilot holes where the marks are. Notice that I only drill halfway into the rod. I then take a drill bit to widen the holes at the top to allow the heads of the screws to countersink and be closer to flat once I install them. I tie down the upper arc because once I place my screws in it, I don't want to take them out again. I think that this weakens their hold, so I will try to avoid it if possible. I still need to drill the center hole that joins the two arcs together, so that's why I did not attach them yet. I am just eyeballing this, but where the arcs touch is where I place my marks. Both arcs need to be marked. I take my lower arc back to the vise and I hand bend it to about 45 degrees. This is exactly how I did it previously with the upper arc. 
About an inch down from my bend, I cut off the excess of the lower arc. With your arcs cut, make sure that the center marks are still aligned. Then step back through the same process of flattening the ends and drilling the pilot holes and using your countersink for the lower arc. Then go back to your base legs and put in your countersink holes. Go back and untie your upper arc and drill out the top arc mark and then the lower arc. I used an eighth inch bit here because I intend to stick a small nail through this part. And remember to use WD-40 to keep the metal and the drill bit from overheating and snapping off. This is the second time I have broken a titanium drill bit on soft aluminum. So now that I have my small hole on the top of each arch, I place a small brad through them. Go from the small arch to the large so the pointy end is facing down during this process. So now take your upper arch and thread your screws into each pilot hole. Then align them with the pilot holes on the lower portion that you marked earlier. And then let them cut into the aluminum. This will give them a great hold. Now do the same process with the lower arc. Notice how I use a small piece of scrap wood. I do this to ensure a portion of the tip of the screw is protruding through the pilot hole. This will help me align it into the pilot holes that I have drilled on the lower part of the footrest. Take your brad from earlier and push it through the upper and lower arches. The slight difference between my two arches puts enough pressure on the nail to hold it in place. I grab a pair of needle nose pliers and bend up the end of the nail. Do this while squeezing the arches together to negate any gap between the two arches. With a slight bend in the nail caused by the pliers and the pressure of the two arches, I don't think this is going anywhere. But if you're a little unsure, you can put a dab of super glue on the nail before you put it in. Then I just simply take my Dremel and smooth down the sharp head of the brad. Going back to my picture, I guesstimate about what point the footrests protrude out of the legs. Looks to be about two inches, but I'm going to just eyeball it anyway. I actually use the grid on my cutting mat to ensure my second mark aligns with my first. I should be clear that I guesstimated two inches from the bottom of my arch, not the end of the leg. Then I simply cut my marks. Starting with a pilot hole, I drill a hole on the side of each leg. Then changing to a larger bit, one that is the same circumference as your steel rod, do this so the rod can pass all the way through and support each foot peg. Remember, these holes should be on the sides of the leg in the same direction as the upper steel rod at the top of the footrest. I am going to be using a scrap piece of oak here. I don't want to use soft wood here since this part of the broom might get beat up a lot since it will be supporting all of the weight of this broom. But here I measure out three inches for each foot peg. Cut each foot peg at its mark. Center each foot peg with each hole in the leg and mark the steel rod. Ensure you provide enough space on each end of the steel rod to allow for a small hole that will keep the piece in place. While on its side, find the center of each peg and place a mark on it. With a drill bit the same diameter as the steel rod, drill out your mark all the way through the foot peg. Again, if you don't have a drill press, I would recommend placing each peg flat on its side. It's important to ensure your hole stays level inside the peg. If your hand drill has a level built into it, pay attention and use it. My Royby has one, but was not properly charged at the time. Now, go back to your steel rod and drill a hole on each end as close as possible to the marks we made earlier. Try and find your smallest drill bit for this. The smaller, the better. Now cut each steel rod above each hole you just drilled. If you do this out of order, it's too hard to hold the rod while drilling. We are now going to shape our foot pegs. I place a centering line on the tops of each peg. Then I'm going to turn them on their sides and draw an oval shape like a football. This will give us some guidelines while shaping. Going back to the top of my peg, I measure out three quarters of an inch in each direction from each center line, and then I mark it. I cut away the excess with the bandsaw. You can use your table saw here, but since this piece is so small, 
I figured it would just be safer on the bandsaw. To save time sanding, I will use a roundover router bit to round out the edges of the foot peg. This will bring me closer to my football shape. Looking back at my picture, I see that each peg has a rubber grip for the feet. So to fake this, I will cut grooves into the wood and just paint that portion of the peg black. Again, you can use your table saw here, but since I already had the router out, I just swapped out the bit. I then took it to the sanding belt to really perfect the oval shape. I wanted it to have a really smooth, fluid look before painting. Then, with 320 grit sandpaper, I smooth out my footrest to get it ready for painting. Okay, in the picture, each foot peg has a small piece of metal that looks to be something that keeps your feet from sliding off the peg. Now looking closely, they are in the shape of a pear, as in a fruit. I do not believe I can pull off cutting and shaping a small piece of metal for this, so I pull out a scrap piece of plexiglass from a shadow box I made earlier, and I will draw this directly on the scrap piece. From there I will cut it out with the bandsaw. After it's cut out, I align it with the foot peg and drill out the hole so I can attach it to the end of the steel rod. After I have my holes, I hold the peg and its end in place with the steel rod. Then, with the pencil, I trace out the sides of the pair. I intend to sand down a relief where the pair piece can move a little bit but not spin in a perfect 360. I use a small Dremel sanding bit to create the relief. Since I'm making this up as I go along, in my head I think this will work just perfect. Now that all of the pieces of the footrest are complete, I will paint them and give them time to dry since it's not raining right now. Okay, this shout out goes to Chad Johnson, who recommended in the comments of the Firebolt that I should use high black gloss as my primer, and then clear coat it. After all is dry, put on my metallic coat. This will give it a much more shiny appearance. So that's exactly what I did. Thanks, Chad, you were right. Now, since I want my foot peg grooves to look like they are rubber, I will leave them black. So after the clear coat, I put on some painter's tape to cover the rigid area that I want to remain black and rubbery looking. Once the painter's tape is in place, I take my metallic paint and paint all the pieces, including the small pair pieces. To this point, I feel like I have successfully pulled off making the kickstand, but I will let you decide that later in the comments. But for now, while the paint is drying, I will begin to make the broom handle. Shaping wood is my favorite part, so let's get cutting. First, I drew out my broom handle right onto a piece of 2x6. This was left over from a picnic table refurbished, so it did not cost me anything. Now, if you're a dark arts fan and you know this broom is Slytherin, you probably noticed that my drawing looks like a large snake. See, I'm learning. Once your outline is complete, cut off the excess wood so your board is more manageable. Now I already proved you can do this with a jigsaw, but to save time, I use my bandsaw to cut out the shape. Now on my very first Nimbus 2000 build, the few negative comments that I received were that the broom was not round enough. So this time I will trim both top and bottom, making them more symmetrical and shoot for a more rounded look when I sand. So now I take it to the table saw and cut my handle as close to a perfect square as I possibly can. The head of the Slytherin broom looks like a cobra, so to add the flare to the head, I simply cut some extra pieces of the board and I will attach them to both sides. So hold your pieces up to the sides and with a pencil, trace out the contour of the head. Take your pieces to the jigsaw or bandsaw so that they have the same shape as the rest of the broom and will be easier to take the shape of the rest of the head once you start sanding. Once cut, I hold them into position and trace out the head of the broom directly onto them. I do this just to ensure my pieces are wide enough and the head will look symmetrical. Once I am happy with the look, I simply apply some wood glue to each side and clamp them together.
After at least allowing an hour to dry, I remove my clamps and retrace out the shape of the head so I can see it a little bit better when I cut. Now, with a jigsaw or bandsaw, I simply cut out my lines. Now, flip your handle over and draw out the bottom of your broom. I'm personally not sure what this part is for, but I will do my best to copy it. The more I look at this broom, the more I see a snake. Now, what I am going to do next will save me some time sanding. I take a round over router bit and take off all the edges of the broom that I can. It gets difficult in some places due to the bend of the broom, but do what you can. I took my freehand router and managed to get to the places that were hard to reach by clamping my broom to a miter stand. Then switch out with the orbital sander and begin shaping the head with 60 grit sandpaper. Have a picture of the broom nearby so you can keep referring back to it, that way it takes the shape properly. Take your time and try to get yourself low and level so you can ensure you are sanding both sides of the head even at the same time. Before we can begin sanding the bottom of the head, we need to chip away the excess wood so we don't lose the shape of our drawing. I used whatever I could find laying around to get rid of the excess wood. I tried a drill, a dremel, a cutoff tool, and even considered a router bit. But don't be impatient like me. Take your time. And I found that the best way to do this was using just a simple old-fashioned chisel. Here you can see me using a cutoff tool. I thought because of the nice round shape of the blade, I would be able to keep the round flare at the head. Here you can see why this was a mistake. I went too deep at one point, and now I, ha I will have to put a little wood filler in my mistake before I can sand and paint the broom. If you have enough wood removed, you can go back to sanding to smooth out your chisel marks. Just take your time and don't rush this. Now go back and sand down the rest of the broom handle, making everything look completely round like I wanted to do earlier. I spent a little more time on the head of the broom to make sure everything was even. During the making of the Nimbus 2000, I thought the process I used to attach the bristles worked like a champ, so I'm going to repeat all that. Why change something that works, right? Place a pock mark in the center of your handle so your drill bit stays aligned. Then gradually work up to a drill bit that is the same size as your dowel. Slide your dowel into the hole you just drilled and mark it with a pencil. Okay, remember this? Yes, the foam I pulled off the side of the road. I am going to take an X-Acto knife and cut it into a few even rectangles. Like in the Nimbus 2000, this will save me time having to fill out the entire base with bristles. With scissors, a knife, the bandsaw, basically cut away the excess foam to give your base the shape that it needs. As you can see, mine is not perfect, but it will all compress under the bristles, so it's really not that important. Now I tried and tried to get the dowel to go into the foam by just sticking it in. I even sharpened the end into a fine point. But sorry, I could not pull this off. The foam grips the piece as you stick it in, and it just does not allow it to slide in. So, I basically cut the foam in half and laid the dowel inside and then just glued it together. This was a new problem for me because when I made the Nimbus 2000, I started with two separate pieces and glued the dowel between them and didn't have this issue. Just like before, spray paint your foam black to hide the spaces that will show through. Going back to my cut bushes, I used the same process as before to shape out the base of the broom. This includes laying down duct tape and sticking the bristles to the tape until you can see that most of your gaps are full. I started with a short group for the center of the base, then I used full pieces to extend the entire duration. I just kept doing the same process until I thought the base was full enough. Then I trimmed and tied everything in place. If this is the first time seeing the making of one of these brooms, I use 22 gauge stem wire that can be found at any arts and crafts store. I then used brown metallic oil rubbed bronze to paint the broom. This would make it appear black at some angles and brown in the light, and the metallic to make it look shiny, and I did co two coats of this. So while the broom handle was drying, I went back to my foot rest to attach the foot pegs. Simply slide the steel rod through the foot peg and place the metal slide clips on the ends, making sure that the clip goes into the sanded out area. 
Then, with the same 22 gauge stem wire, secure that end. Then place the steel rod through the kickstand and thread your wire through the other side of the pre-drilled hole. Simply twist them tight and clip off the leftover wire and bend them down out of the way with a screwdriver. So again, remember me grabbing this off the side of the road? You would be surprised what you can make out of spare parts. This is a desk drawer slider. I thought long and hard here. I needed to figure out how I was going to pull off making the kickstand support the weight of the broom and not just spin in a complete 360. There was actually a few days between me creating this portion of the broom. I kicked around numerous ideas and slept on it a couple of times. If you have a better idea, I would love to hear how you did yours or would do yours. But in the end, this is what I came up with. So in my head, I would drill the holes for the steel rod on the lips of the bracket. Then with a jigsaw, cut the edges and fold them over, sealing off the end. I actually drilled two holes in case I broke the ends while bending them, but this did not happen. So watch how this turned out. With my base in place, hey that rhymed, I make a mark at the end of the bristles. This way I knew to keep the bracket behind the line to ensure that once mounted the bracket would not show. I took my steel rod and with the smallest drill bit I had, it's actually the same size as the one I used on the ends for the stem wire, I drilled out two holes that were no wider than the lips of the bracket. I then fed my rod through the hole and then put a dab of super glue on each brad and put them through each hole. I then bent the ends that I had cut earlier to seal off the end of the bracket. Next, I dug through my screw bin and found three of the same size screws to secure it to the handle. My handle was pretty round, so I thought I would quickly sand down the end to make it flat to get more surface connection once in place. Pay attention to the head of your broom so you are sanding in the right area. Because I am paranoid about cracking the wood, I placed pilot holes in it before I screwed it into place. Don't screw your screws all the way down, or you will not be able to slide in your dowel. Once you slide the dowel into the hole, you can screw the screws down the rest of the way. This will allow them to bite into the dowel to secure it into place. If your screws are short, just add some wood glue to the dowel before you slide it in. Now, using a temporary pipe collar, I tighten my bristles back up. That way I can see if everything is concealed. Now it was time to start on the banding. The Nimbus 2001 is pretty easy, one banding. So I cut a piece of tin three inches wide. I used the same process I did with the earlier brooms and bent it around a roll of duct tape. The piece of tin was $10 from Home Depot. I was really on a roll here, so I continued into the night. Sorry for the dark footage. So let me get the lights on. Take your rolled banding just past your steel rod and pull it tight down on your bristles. Mark your piece a half of an inch longer than the edge. Then go back and cut off the excess. At the half inch mark, I make a slight crease in the metal. I do this by clamping it down on the edge of my workbench under some metal. A board will work here just as easy. I know, I should have drilled my holes first and then made the crease. So yes, I actually did this backwards. But remember, the drill bit here should be the same width as your pop rivets. So I measured from steel rod to steel rod around the outside of the broom. Then I went back and marked on the tin with a pencil. I simply drilled out two holes on each side, slightly overlapping each other. The drill bit is the same width as the hollow aluminum rod. Then, with a pair of tin snips, I cut off the excess between the two holes. Place the banding back around the broom, and with another pipe collar, crank it tight until the rivet holes are at least a half an inch past the edge. I place a couple of hollow aluminum pieces over the steel rods to ensure I have an even space around the holes as I tighten the banding. Then, finish drilling out the holes through the tin. The pre-drilled holes from earlier should keep you aligned. Then insert your rivets. Now you can remove both pipe collars and see what you have. 
obviously my crossbar will now need to be cut because it cannot pass all the way through the broom. I admit, this is not what I had originally envisioned in my head, but since I am making this up as I go along, this will have to do. I cut off each end at about an inch. I used the scrap pieces that I used to center the holes around the banding as a guide, and then I just eyeball it. Now, I'm getting crazy here, but to ensure the steel rod stays centered, I am going to put a piece of aluminum into each end of the hollow tube with a hole that the steel rod can pass through. This will keep it in the very center of the crossbar. Yes, I know, complete overkill. A simple dab of super glue, though, will hold it in place. Now that things have changed at the top of my kickstand, I will actually have to take it apart to get it to attach to the broom. Not the whole thing, but at least one side of it. So begin by unscrewing one side of your footrest. Starting with one side, put the steel rod into the end. Then go back and repeat this to the other side. Okay, I apologize now to whoever wins this broom. While putting on the footrest, I apparently bent the little brads inside that were supposed to keep it from spinning in a complete 360. The kickstand still works because it's all pretty tight, but you can actually move it further than what my little brads would have stopped it at. So yes, I apologize for that. So if you now change your mind and don't want to win this broom, just don't answer the questions. After it is all aligned, replace the screws that join the two sides together. So karma has its place in my videos too. Since I was a smart ass earlier, when I was putting the screw back in, the tip went through the aluminum and pinched my hand. <laughs> Ouch, that served me right. Up to this point, it looks pretty good. I now need to wait until the sun's out and it stops raining for the final coat on the tin binding. So I will wait until tomorrow morning to finish this up. So I cover everything in garbage bags and tape up everything but the bindings to get it ready for painting. I paint in the same three-step process that Chad recommended earlier. Just my luck, it starts to rain again. So I quickly move inside and place a heater on the broom. Then, after all is done, I remove all the tape and place some stain on the bristles to complete the job. My very last step was to cut a small piece of aluminum and super glue it into both ends of the kickstand. This is just to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. It serves real no purpose. Placing this piece in the broom completes it. Okay, so for all of you out there that actually own this broom, tell me how I did. Did the final product come close to the real thing? Let me know in the comments below. I read all comments. I would like to see if I can really get more thumbs up than I did with the Nimbus 2000. And if you give me a thumbs down, please explain yourself in the comments as well. Okay, this one's done. Let me know what should I build next. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.